What's up guys? So, um, just got back from a recent uh, road trip. Uh, drove around to Eureka Springs. Um, it was okay little town, but the roads there were super fucking nice. Um, really got to do a lot of spirited driving um, with the Cayman, and I was actually the most exciting part of the trip. Um, but anyways, got back. I uh, was doing an oil change and decided to uh, just check all my wheels and tires and the suspension and stuff because I was hearing a lot of clunks. Um, my car has about 80,000 miles on it, 81,000. Um, so I'm sure some suspension components are a little tired. And uh, so I was going around each of the wheels and uh, did the wiggle tests at 9 and 3 and 12 and 6. And uh, basically I found that uh, both front uh, suspension uh, both front wheels have a little uh, suspension or steering issues going on so let me show you what I'm talking about uh, hopefully you can see this so if I grab my wheel from uh, 12 and 6 nothing happens no no play or anything typically that's a sign of like bad wheel bearings and stuff maybe a ball joints um, but I did notice I have some play here so that's not good you can uh, give it a little wiggle. You can see that there's the strut itself is almost turning. So yeah, basically, I've got some side to side play, um, and it's doing that on both sides, on the passenger and the driver side. So I suspect it's probably the same issue. But uh, let's pop these wheels off and have a look see. So yeah, so basically, it seems like it's my inner tie rod that's fucking up. So, uh, might be kind of hard without the wheel, but I can do the same movement here, right? It's very, it's not a ton of play, but you can definitely see that the, the back, this guy right here, the inner tie rod's moving in and out. This tie rod, uh, I've looked at it, I've inspected it, it seems fine. Um, but yeah, so I went ahead and was able to uh, go to FCP Euro, picked up a uh, inner and outer tie rod kit for both sides um, for 150 bucks. So I figure if I'm doing, uh, why just do the inner? Might as well do both, because I'm sure the inner is going to need replacing, or sorry, I'm sure the outer tie rod is going to need replacing if it's not already bad uh, within the next 10,000 miles. So, fuck it, might as well just do it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, replace your tie rods. Um, so, yeah, I'm waiting on the parts, and I'm going to get some tools, and uh, we're going to have a good time. All right, guys, so these are basically the tools that you'll need for the job. Um, I have an impact wrench, but you can get away with just a couple normal ratchets. Um, so I have an 18 millimeter socket. That's what you'll need for the uh, nut for the outer tie rod end. Um, an extension or two. Like I said, your ratchet, impact gun. Uh, 20 millimeter wrench or adjustable pliers a uh, pair of pliers for or channel locks for the hose clamp screwdriver a flathead screwdriver to get your um, CV or Oetker clamp off of the end of the tie rod boot um, a 13 millimeter wrench for uh, the inner tie rod end so the end of the inner tie rod. Um, if you don't have an impact gun, you'll need a T40 Torx driver. Um, some sort of marking device. I have a red Sharpie. Um, you'll need a breaker bar, uh, a tie rod removal tool, um, and a uh, inner tie rod removal tool. So the inner tie
tie rod removal tool as well as the outer tie rod removal tool I just rented from my local auto parts store. Um, you can buy them for relatively cheap. I've seen them for 35 bucks at Harbor Freight to 75 bucks at uh, other tool stores. But yeah, at an auto parts store, it's about 95 bucks to rent. This guy is about 30 or 40 bucks to rent, and it's free once you return it. So that's basically all the tools you need. I forgot, you'll also need a torque wrench or two. Um, so you can torque everything down to spec. Um, but yeah, so that should be everything you need for this job outside of uh, maybe a few towels to wipe up some grease. Alright guys, so first things first, um, you want to make sure that your steering wheel is centered, right? It's straight, wheels are pointing forward as close as you can. Um, otherwise, if you do this, uh, it might be a little awkward. Um, you can probably... I mean, you can always steer it from all the way to the left to make uh, to provide more clearance for you, um, and then switch to the all the way to the other side. So again, you have more clearance to removal to remove and install the tie rods. But um, I mean, I think there's plenty of space without having to do so, and it's just easier um, for getting your alignment relatively close uh, if you just leave the steering wheel straight. So, um, anyways. So let's have a look at what we got here. So here is the front, uh, obviously the front, the passenger side, right? Or the right side if you're sitting in the steering wheel, uh, sitting inside of the car. So uh, here we have the um, outer tie rod, the inner tie rod is on that side. Um, covered by a dust boot. So basically all we're going to do is we're going to undo the outside portion, which if you can see here, um, hopefully that's focused. There's a bolt right here um, that's on the end of the tie rod and you should be able to just undo this bolt and uh, pop it off using either a pickle fork or um, one of these little tie rod uh, removal tools that I rented from uh, O'Reilly's. You get them at any auto parts store um, or you just buy them. They're probably 20, 30 bucks. Uh, Harbor Freight, Freight, Harbor Freight probably has a few of them that you can get. Um, so if I was just doing the outer tie rod portion, which um, honestly mine seems like it's okay, uh, in okay shape, you would just undo this bolt that's back here behind the brake rotor, and then you would twist it off right here. Um, just grab whatever size wrench and just undo it. But I'm going to replace the whole assembly, seeing as how my inner tie rods are the ones that are really bad. So yeah, so I'm just gonna undo it from the steering knuckle first. Then I'm going to unclip uh, this. Um, then unclip all the way in the back there. You have an Oticker clamp. I forgot what they're called, but uh, typically used on CV axles uh, for your axle boots. Um, and I'll probably take off this uh, inner one as well, or sorry, the outer tie rod as well, just to give myself more room to remove the inter uh, inner tie rod. So, yeah. Once you get your wheel straight, we're going to mark uh, the position of the outer tie rod. Um, so you can see that. Over here, um, so this is how we're gonna undo the tie rod. We're just gonna, once we unbolt it from the knuckle, we're going to twist this off. And you can see that there's a few, what is it, like one, two, two threads or so um, from the, onto the inner tie rod. 
So I'm just going to mark it so that I have a little bit of a reference. Oh god, I just shit my pants, I think. Uh, I'm just going to mark it real quick and uh, so that way I have a little bit of a reference to uh, measure it up against uh, the new setup. So let's do that real quick. I got a red Sharpie. I'm just gonna mark it real quick. Sorry if it's a little out of focus, but I'm just gonna mark it right here. Alright. So it's, uh, it's kinda hard to see, but yeah. So yeah, so I marked that so that I can line it up with the new tie rod assembly um, and that way I can kind of ballpark it, get it close enough to where it's uh, the car is drivable so I can drive to my alignment shop and uh, relatively safely, right? Because otherwise if you just um, completely go in blind and um, just set the tie rod length to whatever, your wheels are going to be all sorts of whack. So just make sure you mark it before you start taking anything apart. So that be, uh, being done, let's go ahead and drop the um, tie rod off of the knuckle. So just FYI, if you didn't notice already, um, there is, sorry if this is gonna be hard to see you guys. Um, there is, uh, at the end of this bolt, it's kinda nice, um, there's a, Torques, um, and so what is that like a T T thirty or something like that? Um, but basically, you could throw that in there um, with a Torx bit, and then you take an open end wrench, um, and then you can take this bolt off, um, and then your Torx driver will end up keeping the tie rod end from spinning. Right? Otherwise, if you try to undo this nut, it's on there pretty tight. Um, you're gonna be twisting the whole tie rod itself. So I have an impact gun, so I'm not gonna have to worry about that. But if you were just using basic hand tools, you would probably need a Torx uh, Torx driver to keep this uh, tie rod bolt from twisting as you try to spin the nut off. So it's a it's a T40 uh, Torx bit. Yeah, you'd basically just throw the throw your wrench on on here, throw your Torx bit here, and then you would just turn it while keeping the uh, bolt from twisting. It's an 18 millimeter, right? So I have an impact gun, 18 millimeter uh, socket, and a little extension. Let's do it. Sorry if you guys can't see. And we're off. I love impact guns. All right. But one suggestion that I would make is before you undo uh, this tie rod bolt right there, the bolt that attaches the outer tie rod to the knuckle, I would uh, go ahead and loosen the jam nut on the uh, end of the outer tie rod. Uh, it's kind of hard when your tie rod's like flopping around and stuff, but when it's attached to the steering knuckle, it's super easy. So I got the bolt off. Um, so now I'll, you can either hit it with a hammer, the old school way, and this should drop out. But I don't really want to damage anything, so like I said, I rented this uh, little ball joint removal tool. I'm gonna try to use it here. Um, but yeah, basically you just stick it in between the uh, ball joint arm and the steering knuckle. And then you just uh, basically screw this bolt down. And uh, it'll push the ball joint out of the uh, hole on the steering knuckle. So let me just get this on there best I can. Okay, and then we'll just twist this guy down. All right, here we go. There it is. Y'all see that, hopefully? So you just give it a couple uh, t 
turns with the wrench or impact hammer and the, the tie rod end just pops right out. <clears throat> and boom, steering knuckles now loose. So I can turn this out of the way um, to fit my uh, big inner tie rod removal tool. So like I said, this, eh, it's not terrible. Like I said, I probably wouldn't be replacing this if that one wasn't so bad, but there's a lot of play on the inside though. Kind of hard to, I can't even fucking see it. Um, yeah, like I said, this isn't too terrible, but a fresh, brand new ball joint really sh should be kind of hard to move. Like, I can move this with like a finger, right? So it should be pretty difficult, um, but not too bad. So, yeah, like I said, there is some play over here. Uh, hopefully I'm not just replacing this for fun. So, um, let's go ahead and I'm going to unclip this boot real quick. Um, and then I'll probably unbolt this uh, tie rod end. So you can also kind of tell that the inner tie rod's bad because of this, right? So if you had a good inner tie rod, uh, there'd be a little bit of resistance, right? You see how it just falls? So a good inner tie rod would sort of slowly drop like that, right? There'd be a little bit of tension on it. So, so for the boot, uh, like I said, this might be a little tough to see because um, I'm going to be blocking the, blocking the way a little bit, but basically just take a pair of channel locks, uh, adjustable pliers, and it's a pretty, pretty standard clamp. Um, so you're basically just going to uh, clamp down on both ends and then just squeeze it tight. So let's do this. So it might be kind of hard to see. But, oh, fuck. Fucked it up. Oh. Just do this. So yeah, so the, it's just a, a normal little clamp. So you just squeeze on this, pull it here, boom. Clamp is off. Hopefully y'all can see it. Um, so now this part of the boot's gonna be loose, but yeah. So I marked my tie rod again. Make sure that you mark it so that you uh, can adjust your new set. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now. Um, might mark it again too, just so I could actually line it up too. Okay. Alright, uh, another pro tip, uh, on the other side I'm stupid and also on this side I uh, ended up marking uh, the jam nut <laughs> and the uh, inner tie rod, so don't do that. Um, you want to undo this tie rod first, or the undo the jam nut, and then mark right here. Uh, where you want the inner tie rod to hit when you spin it on. All right, if you mark it on the nut, well, the nut obviously can move. God. <laughs> the nut can move and also right there. Um, I mean, you could still use the markings to basically line it up. So like once I thread it on, I counted the number of threads. On this side, I got 24 uh, turns. So once you hit 24 turns, you mark the nut and match it up to about here or so where my marks were and then that that way I'll know how much to thread the inner tie rod on once it meets this and it's pretty tight but yeah it's best to just undo this nut and then mark uh, where the inner tie rod threads onto so pro tip don't fuck up don't be like me so yeah so uh, once you mark this uh, you gotta take this, uh, you gotta separate the outer tie rod from the inner tie rod. So it's held on by this, uh, there's a jam nut basically on the end of it. So I'm gonna turn the jam nut that way while 
twisting the outer tie rod in to the left. And uh, hopefully I can break it free. Uh, I wish I had a smaller wrench though. But it's all good. So these are uh, the tie rod end right here by the jam nut that's uh, 21 millimeters and the jam nut itself is 21 millimeters. Okay, probably should have broken these loose before I uh, detached from the hub. Alright, let's see if I can break this free. Oh fuck, just hit my knuckles. Got it. That fucking hurt though. Uh, okay, so once your jam nut's loose, uh, see how it's twisting that way. Now I can uh, basically hold on to the inner tie rod end and twist this free. Uh, twist the inner tie rod free. So um, ideally, it's nice to kind of count uh, how many times the uh, tie rod spins. So that way, you get a another relatively accurate estimate as to how far to thread your tie rod, right? Um, that way, again, uh, your alignment's not as ridiculous so that when you drive to the alignment shop, uh, you're still relatively safe and in control. So, get that. My 21 millimeter wrench here. And we're just going to twist it. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, about 25 turns. All right, cool. So that's one uh, tie rod end done. Okay, so now with the outer tie rod off, we're going to try and get this... Uh, uh, inner tie rod boot off. Um, it's gonna be a little difficult to see. So yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but it's all the way back here. Um, let's see what I can do here. So yeah, it's fucking all the way back there. So I'm hoping Yep, so it's right there, so I'm hoping that I can get this flathead screwdriver in here and uh, kind of just basically force it loose. It's one of those uh, CV boot clamps. They're kind of a bitch, right? So let's see if I can get it. So it's hard to see, but I basically just stuck the screwdriver um, kind of like so, right? I stuck it into the opening, and I just fucking forced it in and just popped it out like that. So, yeah. Should be able to pull that clamp out now, and then slide the boot off. Yeah, so here's maybe here's a better view of the clamp itself. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those uh, Autoker clamps, and they basically uh, they clamp like so, right? And this doesn't actually look like this until it's ready to be clamped, right? So you just you squeeze this, and then that 
tightens down on the clamp. It pinches it even more, and I'll show you guys uh, a, a new clamp. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, like I said, this was more flush against here, and I just stuck the screwdriver into this little opening, right, like so, and then just pried it up like that. So let's go ahead and slide this boot off. Pull this through, maybe. Again, sorry if I'm in the way, guys. So basically I just kind of twisted the boot because it was on there pretty tight, but if you give it a good little twist, it'll uh, break its seals. And here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, bolt real quick. From the tie rod. So I can get this boot all the way off. So we're gonna need it to be able to access the uh, tightening mechanism for the inner tie rod. Okay, here's the clamp. Make sure you guys hold on to these um, things. Um, so here's the clamp. It's just like a typical standard clamp. And like I said, you just uh, it's got these little nipples on here. So you just take a pair of channel locks or some other pliers and squeeze it and then this widens up all right all right so now we get this boot off real quick oh. okay boot is off so that just slid right off Ugh. Here's a boot. So here now we have our tie rod and all right. So here's our uh, inner tie rod. Um, so you can see uh, right here at the end of the steering rack. So the this far one, right? That's where the boot connects to. And here's where it's actually connected to the steering rack. So, um, try to get a focus. Can't see anything. Fuck. So you can see there's a, it's like a, a nut, right? Um, basically you need to grab onto those in order to twist the tie rod off of the steering rack. Um, so obviously you can't fit a wrench in there, so what are you going to do? So this is the inner tie rod removal tool. Um, so this, along with my outer tie rod removal tool, I was able to rent from Harbor Freight. This was 95 bucks to rent. Uh, the other tie rod tool was like 30 or 40 bucks to rent. Um, they're free rentals, you basically just put down a deposit, and then you return it within 48 hours, and you're good to go. Um, I've seen these online, you can get them for like 70 bucks. I think Harbor Freight actually now carries this similar tool and it's like 35 40 bucks so consider picking one up like just purchasing to have on my own but this is my only vehicle that requires this sort of tie rod removal tool so figure i just rent it save some money so show you this tool out real quick so it's basically just a giant pipe um with a uh quarter inch um, socket or ratchet attachment on here. Basically just attach your wrench to here and then you attach uh, your appropriate sized uh, fitting onto the end well, the end here and then you throw it around the tie rod 
and then you just use it like a big uh, deep socket, right? It's an extra deep socket. So let's figure out what size we need. So the size that I found fits the best is uh, seven, uh, one and seven sixteenths. It's a little big. Uh, ideally, 34 millimeters probably would have fit better, but this should be fine. But yeah, so basically you just take that, insert it in there, and then you can have this little locking ring that's, um, sorry if it's kind of hard to see, but you have a locking ring uh, that just sort of locks it into place. So it shouldn't really go anywhere. Um, like I said, you just kind of throw it on there, and then you throw your ratchet on, onto the back, and then boom, giant socket. All right, so yeah, it's a, this, I tried all the uh, sizes, and one and seven sixteenth is the best fit. It is a little loose, so probably going to uh, do a little damage here. Um, man, just by a smidge. But it should be fine. So I said, we're just gonna throw this on top. Like so. Keep some tension on here. And then we'll give it a little little twist. Hopefully. Ah, spun. spun out. Okay, so there's a 33.6, that's a little, little snug, but forcing it on basically just by taking this uh, giant wrench and uh, hammering it on. And it's not gonna slip anywhere. Like, I think the perfect size would have been 34 millimeters. Got my... Uh, fig on and breaker bar is ready to go. Okay, breaker bar is good. All right, here we go. Oh, I, think I got it. All right. So yeah, I broke it loose, and now it spins freely at all. But yeah, so I broke it free, um, and it spins freely now. So I'm gonna get this guy off real quick. Give it a couple wax. Now this guy will come off, spin right off, and all right, there it is. There it is, boys. So uh, that's how you take it off. Installation is just going to be uh, reverse, right? Just going to basically thread this guy on. Um, make sure she's tight using the uh, tool and then uh, thread on my tie rod or the outer tie rod um, after I throw it on the boot and clamp it all down and stuff so yeah um, go ahead and remove the other side and I'll show you guys I'll get back to you on the install just another pro tip this is the driver side of the vehicle and it's uh, the same process but slightly um, different just in the sense that uh, the cables and hard lines and piping and stuff for the coolant is slightly different um, as you can see it's, uh, it's not too bad there's plenty of room for everything um, honestly there's 
I think this side was a little bit easier because uh, there was more room for me to like hammer my ratchet onto the uh, the attachment for the big tie rod removal tool. Um, but yeah, so it's basically the same process, but uh, just slightly different in a sense of like orienting your tools and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, when I do the clip or the clamp for the boot. Um, it was pointing straight up, just like the other side, uh, and it was kind of difficult for me to get my screwdriver in there to like pry the clamp off. So when I install the new boot, I'm probably going to position the clamp so it's on this side, in this corner right here, um, just to give me a little bit more room for uh, clamping it down and the next time I have to remove it. So yeah, pro tip boys.